Testing. Testing. Oh, did I possibly hit sound? I see. Looks like I'm talking. Not hearing anything on YouTube. Hello? Hello? Oh my goodness. I wish someone was here to tell me if my audio was working. Testing? Testing? Huh. Well, let me see. Do, 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 do. Hello. Hello. La, la, la. Testing, testing, oh, did I possibly get sound? I see, looks like I'm talking. Not hearing. Anything. Am I still talking on YouTube? Sounds like it's super Hello? delayed. Hello? Oh my goodness. I wish someone was here to tell me. Hello? Hello? Okay, well, maybe, maybe we will just try this, try this again, um, and, uh, I'm going to hope that my audio is coming through. Okay, I'm going to hope that it's not on a super delay and we're going to try and read this little story that I keep wanting to read to you guys so let's see if we can get it working I'm really really hopeful that this will cooperate okay screen share and cancel I apologize if you're watching this and you just want the show to start. I'm very, very bad at Hangouts and, oh, maybe, hmm, 
Hey, yeah, I'm really just terrible at this. Okay, but that's why we're here to learn, right? Just have to remember how to get to the screen that let me share the right page. La, 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 la. Okay, that is stop it. Of course, it's like the screen sharing worked last time, but and the audio didn't, and then now the audio is working and the screen sharing is not. Let me see if the audio is even working on this. Oh, the audio is working and the screen sharing is not. Let me see if the audio is even working on this. Oh, the audio is working and the screen sharing is not. Let me see if the audio is even working on this. Okay, um, hey, looks like the audio seems to be working. Okay, so I just have to get the screen sharing to work and go to the correct page. Doing live streams is uh, incredibly, incredibly difficult. Apparently, you know, there's always, always seems to be something going on with it. So, okay, I got the page I want. Let's see if we can screen share it. Oh, there we go. Perfect. That's what I want. We want to share this. We want to share that. Okay, awesome. All right, so it looks like I'm screen sharing. Okay, perfect. So I'm gonna hope that this is going through correctly. Hope that audio is good. So today we're going to be talking about the 1561 celestial phenomenon over Nuremberg, Germany. I think it's very interesting. It is, it, it's just a very, very interesting little tale. Shouldn't take too long to talk about it. And so, the 1561 celestial phenomenon over Nuremberg was a mass sighting of celestial phenomena or unidentified flying objects above Nuremberg, Germany. The phenomenon has been interpreted by some U modern UFO enthusiasts as an aerial battle of extraterrestrial origin. This view is mostly dismissed by skeptics, some referencing Carl Jung's mid-20th century writings about the subject, while others find the phenomenon is likely to be a sundog. Let's just look on this picture right here. These are all the pictures that I found are they're just basically drawings, like artist renditions. And I mean, I don't know if you've ever seen a sun dog, but we can we can look at that in a minute. But uh, this this is not in any way what a sun dog looks like. But that's uh, that's pretty awesome. I like that picture a lot. The history: a broadsheet news article printed in April of 1561. Describes a mass sighting of UFOs. The broadsheet, illustrated with a woodcut engraving and text by Hans Glaser, measures 26.2 centimeters by 38 centimeters. The document is archived in prints and drawings collection at the Zentra Bibliothek Zurich in Zurich, Switzerland. According to the broadsheet, around dawn on April 14, 1561, residents of Nuremberg saw what they described as an aerial battle followed by the appearance of a large black triangular object 
and then a large crash outside of the city. The broadsheet claims that witnesses observed hundreds of spheres, cylinders, and other odd-shaped objects that moved erratically overhead. The broadsheet describes objects of various shapes, including crosses, globes, two lunar crescents, a black sphere, and tubular objects from which several smaller round objects emerged and darted around the sky at dawn. The Phenomenon Described in the morning of April 14, 1561, at daybreak, between 4 and 5 a.m., a dreadful apparition occurred on the sun, and then this was seen in, Dur in Nuremberg, in the city, before the gates, and in the country, by many men and women. At first there appeared the middle of the sun, two blood-red semicircular arcs, just like the moon in its last quarter, and in the sun, above and below, and on both sides, the color was blood. There stood a round ball of partly dull, partly black ferrous color. <clears throat> Likewise, there stood on both sides, and as a torus about the sun, such blood red, blood red ones and other balls in large number, about three in a line and four in a square, also some alone. In between these globes, there were visible a blood red crosses between which there were blood red strips becoming thicker to the rear and in the front malleable like the rods of reed grass which were intermingled among them two big rods one on the right the other on the left and within the small and big rods there were three also four and more globes let's look at that picture again all kinds of stuff in the sky just all kinds of crazy stuff going on. And I mean, look at how big, how big, uh, you know, this stuff is compared to like the houses, the people and stuff is huge. All right, get back down to where we were. Really hope that my audio is still working. These all started to fight among themselves. So that the globes, which were first in the sun, flew out to the ones standing on both sides. Thereafter, the globes standing outside the sun in the small and large rods flew into the sun. Besides, the globes flew back and forth among themselves and fought vehemently with each other over, with each other for over an hour. And when the conflict in and again out of the sun was most intense, they became fatigued to such an extent that they all, as said above, fell from the sun down upon the earth as if they all burned. And then they wasted away on the earth with immense smoke. After all this, there was something like a black spear, very long and thick sighted. The shaft pointed to the east, then pointed west. Whatever such signs mean, God alone knows. Although we have seen shortly one after another many kinds of signs on the heaven which was sent to us by the Almighty God to bring us to repentance, we still are, unfortunately, so ungrateful that we despise such high signs and miracles of God. Or we speak of them with ridicule and discard them to the wind in order that God may send us a frightening punishment on account, for, on account of our ungratefulness. After all, the God-fearing will by no means discard these signs, but will take it to heart as a warning of their merciful Father in heaven, will mend their lives and faithfully beg God that he may avert his wrath, including the well-deserved punishment on us, so that we may be temporarily here and perpetually there, live as his children, for it may God grant us help. Amen. By Hans Glazer, Letter Painter of Nuremberg. Okay, the modern interpretations. According to author Jason Colavito, the woodcut broadsheet became known in modern culture after being published in Carl Jung's 1958 book Flying Saucers, a modern myth of things seen in the skies, a book, a book which analyzed the archetypal meaning of UFOs. Most more recently, 
The event has been classified as a UFO sighting by many, and even named the UFO battle over Nuremberg by a few enthusiasts. Young expressed a view that the spectacle was likely a natural phenomenon with religious and military interpretations overlaying it. If the UFOs were living organisms, one would think of a swarm of insects rising with the sun, not to fight one another, but to mate and celebrate the marriage flight. A military interpretation would be the tubes as cannons and the spheres as cannonballs. Emphasize the black spearhead spearhead at the bottom of the scene, and Glazer's own testimony that the globes fought vehemently until exhausted. A religious view would emphasize the crosses. Young thinks the images of four globes coupled by lines suggested crossed marriage quaternities and forms the model for the primitive cross cousin marriage. It could also be an individuation symbol. The association of sunrise suggests the revelation of light. Another picture of it. No, I just, I have no, I don't even have an explanation for it. I mean, what? It, yeah, I just, it's awesome. It's awesome. Um, I mean, I definitely think that, well, what I thought of aliens has changed since Flat Earth came into my life. Um, I still think that other beings are a thing, but I don't think they come from millions and billions and absurd amount of light years away. Um, I think they're just kind of, they're still here in the system with us, or, I mean, maybe they're able to get to possible other lands, but, um, but yeah, I mean, the story, is, it's super fun. I like it a lot. Let's see. Otto Billig made an effort to provide a historical con context for the apparition in his comments. He notes Nuremberg was one of the most prestigious cities of the late Middle Ages, a free and imperial city known for its wealth and nobility. It tried to maintain a neutrality during the furious warring between Catholics and Protestants during the Reformation. But when one Protestant prince was rebuffed when he insisted on financial tributes to fund his battles, the city was besieged and its trade cut off. Though ultimately successful in defending itself, the rebuilding of fortifications in Nuremberg necessitated a new round of taxation, and the city suffered hard times in its aftermath. On Good Friday, 1554, another siege happened, and one broadsheet publisher described mock sons that prog prognosticated God's will wanted confession of sinful ways, i.e. the victims brought it on themselves. Another sky apparition followed in July of knights fighting each other with fiery swords, thus warning a coming day of judgment. Very similar apparitions of knights fighting in the skies were frequently reported during the Thirty Years' War. Many similar broadsheets of wondrous signs exist in German and Swiss archives, and Nuremberg seems the focus of a number of them. Presumably because of the hardships and conflicts of the ex-prosperous, such conditions typically accentuate apocalyptic thought. So that is, that's pretty much all that there is about uh, the story of Nuremberg, Germany. Um, we can go and look at a couple of the pictures of it, because um, those are pretty cool. I like, they're really, there's a couple pretty interesting ones. Oh, I don't know why I'm doing that. Um, I'm looking for, oh yeah. Great that you guys are here to share this joy with me while I figure out. Okay, there we go. Let's look at some pictures. Yeah, these are all artist, artist depictions, but um, I mean, it's just super interesting. It's like, what the heck? What the heck is all this stuff? And and yeah, I just I love seeing how how big it all is compared to 
compared to the people and the cities down here. And, um, I mean, this was over, over a whole city for like an hour, you know, people are just sitting there having breakfast and all of a sudden this, this battle breaks out over, over the city. And, um, yeah, I wish we could find more, more info on it because it's pretty interesting. I mean, what are, what are these things? You know, are they just, that's, that's what I wonder most. What are they? Who are they? Where are they from? What are they, what are they doing here? Are they observing us? Like we're observing them? Are we, you know, are they interested in what we're doing? Do they, do they even care? Do they even notice us? Do, oh, this is a cool one. But the sky is literally on fire. I mean, that's, Oh, that's just awesome. So awesome. So, um, yeah, I really, I really enjoy just random little hidden gem stories like this. And, um, I hope you guys do as well. And if you, if you know of any, any good little little stories like this please leave me a comment and let me know oh yeah here we go here's a sun dog so i don't know how to zoom in on it um but yeah actually let's look at some bigger pictures of uh of some sun dogs um but yeah if you guys know of any any little stories like this you know just random date, random city that has a cool event that I could do a live stream about, just drop me a comment, let me know. And um, yeah, if I, I'll read through it. And if I think it's interesting, I'll make a video about it and we can discuss it a little bit. What was I going to look for? Oh yeah, Sundog. That happens a lot that uh, I just get blank blank mind and I don't know I don't know what the heck I was talking about okay so these are sun dogs and I mean those don't they all look they all look pretty pretty similar I mean they you know there's a little bit of variance probably depending on what angle the sun is compared to you but I mean look it's middle sides top and a dome here's one that's a full circle uh, but going back to this and comparing I mean that's just that's not that's not in any way the same that's just not there's that and a sun dog. Those are not those are not the same at all. So so yeah, this this little event I definitely think it was it was not sun dogs. It was some kind of some kind of uh, apparition, alien life form, something. I'm not sure. It's fun to fun to think about though. But uh I'll close that out and I think I'm done screen sharing there. Excellent. Well, yeah, I hope that we check and see if anyone is actually here. I don't think anyone is. That's all good. So, super glad that I, I think that I got everything working. Screen sharing, audio, uh, looks like it's going great. I hope you friends enjoyed this little story and... I apologize for the audio issues at the beginning, but thank you for sticking it out. So, yeah, if you have any little stories you want me to talk about, uh, just drop me a comment and let me know. And I will, I'm pretty much willing to make a video on, if it's interesting to me, I will, I will make a video. Or if it's super interesting to you, I will consider it. So, yeah, thank you so much for stopping by Dottie's World. This has been Dottie. 
I hope you all have a wonderful day.